picking up our microphones. Oh well. Why would that be? I don't know. We can take them off. There's they're not working. We'll just use the that well, I guess it don't matter. And we are live. Are you sure? I'm sure. So you're just showing the MacBook mic. It's not showing the the new mic. Crazy. Yeah. I don't know why. All right. I'll sit up. I just unplug the mic and just cut them off. You need me to cut mine off? Nah, it's fine. We are good. What's going on, everybody? Having a little technical difficulty right off the bat, but that's all right. That's the way it goes. <laughs> take, take mine off too, Gidget. <laughs> For didn't. some reason, the mics aren't working, but the computer, the computer mic's on, so y'all can hear us from there. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't work. It worked last time. Huh. May should have done a test run first. Yeah, I was... Tried to do a test run last night. And... Yeah, it didn't work out last night, did it? It did not work out. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful Sunday, and I hope y'all had an awesome week. Uh, we sure did, as always. Super busy. I don't think there's a time when we're not super busy. Uh, well, I think most people mm -hmm. this day and time are busy. Are busy yeah, for the you're most probably part. Right. I think you're probably right. I think everybody that has children is going fifty different directions. That's right. And then when you add a farm on top of even one child, it makes for interesting. That's right. All right. So y'all are all saying you can hear. Yeah, they can hear us through the computer. Uh, microphone. Those mics are just a little bit better, but it's all good. We're good. People can hear us, so we're good to go. We are. We got Gidget up here laying on the couch beside me, and Arlo's on the other side. Arlo is on the other side. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't hear them right now, but just let something get their attention, and they'll be... Oh, yeah. You'll hear them in for sure. No doubt. They'll be on it like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> Hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. We do have a couple of new shirts. Uh, we got this one right here. It's hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. You guys know we say that a lot. And so we came out with this new shirt and the other one we don't have for ourselves yet, but I saw it shipped out. So we'll be getting that shirt this week. And I am so excited that about is a, this one. That's your shirt. The other one that is on the website, but I haven't seen in person, is going to be awesome. Mm hmm It's the state of Alabama and it has all of our animals. I mean, from... From Zerk, Mary Carl's cockatiel, <laughs> to Nugget, <laughs> to Gidget. To, That's right. I mean, it has every animal we have in the outline of the state of Alabama. It does. It's, it's pretty cool. Jacqueline and the Head Family Farm, who does our website and does a lot of IT stuff, and Zach, they do a lot of a lot of stuff on the website and the emails, and they 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 handle all that for us. And um, she also has been designing most of our shirts here lately. And so we got two new ones that are, have come out. And uh, we just thought we'd share that with you guys and hope y'all enjoy them as much as we do. We love them. We we're just, we're just, I get so tickled when we get a new one out. So. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that was something that I had an idea of. And I thought it'd be a, a cool shirt. And I sent it to Jacqueline. And I didn't realize how much work was going to be involved in the clip art and the different things she had yeah. to put together to make, to make that shirt work. That's right. But lo and behold, she got it done, and I think it's going to be awesome. Yep. Absolutely. They're, and they're on here. I Are see they? them. They're on here. Yep. Head Family Farm. We love the way the shirt turned out, too. Yes. I can't wait to see mine in person. I'm going to be checking my mailbox every day. That's right. And uh, as you guys know, we got uh, we got three awesome moderators that moderate our lives for us. Y'all, please check them out. Uh, they're great creators, uh, great families, awesome channels. And that is Head Family Farm. That's Chestnut Hill Farmstead. And Big Family Small Farm, Wes and Angie. And Wes and Angie just had a one heck of a... <laughs> week last week if you have not seen it yet 
Wes and Angie from Big Family Small Farm were on, they were actually episode number two. They were family number two at, uh, with Lester and Jamie at I Survived, I'm a Survivor. It's a series they got going on over there. And uh, Wes is, one of their videos came out this morning. And so y'all be sure to check that out over there on Wes and Angie's channel where they went over to uh, I'm a Survivor and actually built Jamie and Lester some beautiful, gorgeous raised bed gardens. Uh, hey, they're just, uh, it, it was phenomenal. I already told Wes, I was like, when I need, when we're going to be in the back <laughs> building our raised beds, I may have to hit you up with some pointers because, man, they were, it looked awesome. It really looked awesome. Well, our whole um, idea about the back is to do a potage garden. Yes. And I said that correctly. No one has to interrupt to you tell me I did that. not say That's that right. correctly. I've been practicing. <laughs> In my sleep, I say protege, 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 protege. So mm. you showed me a picture of mm -hmm. what they had completed, and I could not believe Wasn't how awesome? awesome it was. It was. It I was mean, I knew they were talented. Fabulous. I knew they were talented. Yes. And that goes for Wes and Angie. But I had I had no idea that they were capable of doing that in that amount of time. Oh, gosh. I, I didn't. <laughs> I kept. Me and Wes are really good friends. And me and Lester are really good friends. And um, so Wes was. Um, he was telling me what all he was going to do and show me his plans and stuff. And I was like, man, are you sure? Are you sure you can do that in two days now? And uh, he was like, we can do it. We can do it. And they did it. I'm not going to lie. They I'm did tell you, it. Man. It's, a, it's a good thing. Even five years ago, if Lester had picked Jason and I to do something <laughs> like that, it would have made the highlights all right. <laughs> and I'm not knocking this. It's just not not mm -hmm. our forte to be able to build something and it come out the way we want it to the first time. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> so um, I'm glad those five years have passed. Yes. And we weren't el eligible for the little competition. Oh, no, it's for smaller creators. It's for um, small channels. And Lester's trying to, trying to help these smaller channels out to grow, which is, which is an awesome thing. Really Well, is. you know, he does not have a stingy bone in his body. He doesn't. And he is... He, he and Jamie are just awesome people. Yes. That goes without even needing to say, I think. But the fact that, you know, he's just, he's all about willing to help anybody and everybody he can. He's such a good man. So giving. That's so, right. So wanting to help others. And we just can't. I mean, he's helped us, for goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. He and Jamie. Jamie Absolutely. helped me, you know, kind of get off the ledge and get me to start my channel. So your own channel. We're we're thankful to have both of those families mm -hmm. in our lives. And your channel is doing quite well. I do want to say though, we're trying to figure out your schedule for your channel. We're um we're we're, we're trying to figure out number one, Mary Carl's not editing your videos anymore. So I'm editing the videos. Yeah, she did the first one. Yeah. And she said that her head hurt after she got finished with it. And I think that she didn't, she loves to edit reels. She loves to edit reels. How long Little reel? short reels. A minute. Okay. So she thought in her mind that she would be able to sit down and edit a whole video that Yeah, quick. I think so too. And so she had to go through all the footage and watch it. Yeah. And y'all, she said, Mom, I, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> That's I, right. It, it's giving me a headache mm. to have to figure out what stays and what goes. Yeah. So Jason is doing the editing of our videos. I am. And I don't mind it at all because I like to edit videos. So It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And we're trying to figure out your schedule. So originally we said Tuesdays. And that worked for a week or two. But then it changed. Up. Oh, there's Tracy on here from Just Dig It Falls. Hey, hey Tracy. Tracy. And then, it, then I feel like Thursday is better. Well, I do, but it's also a possibility that we can do Tuesday and Thursday. I can make the content. If you can make the content, I can edit it. I can make the content, yeah. but here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to take away from our time as a family and feel like, well, we've got to do this because this is our schedule. Right. So... I'm kind of thinking for a few weeks, if you get ahead of schedule and you get a couple of three videos edited, right. let's skip to the one day, stick to the one, one day, day a week. week. Okay. And then if we see that it's becoming that we have some free time mm -hmm. by chance, then we do too. 
Okay. That sounds like a plan. I just we'll don't do that. want you to be overwhelmed. And, yeah. You know, I mean. Well, your video is a lot easier to edit than the ones I do, but it's um, it's 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 all good. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with that. And so we're just going to stick with Thursday for your video. For right now. For right now. Because, we may have a special edition every now and then. Yeah. And if we do, we'll try to hop on a live and say, hey, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. But I think for a schedule, it's best for us to say Thursday for sure. And anything else that happens just happens. Sounds like a plan. I like that. Women's special edition. That's right. That's right. Oh, you talked about the reels how they're one minute long. Uh, the YouTube people may not know what that is. If you just strictly watch us and follow us on YouTube, um, Facebook has a thing called Reels, and that's where we get to create a one-minute video. And I do probably average one a day here recently. I've, I've bumped it up to two. I like making them like Mary Carl does. But Facebook has, I mean, YouTube has it too, but it's called Shorts. And I never really posted them on our main channel. I started a whole other channel called Cocky or Shorts. Uh, I was posting them there. Didn't get very many views on them, so I just assume maybe you guys didn't really care for the short video. I, I just don't know. So yesterday I created one, and today I created one, and I posted them on our actual main channel, and I got a ton of views on them. So I'm kind of thinking you guys may want them, the YouTube fans. Um If you do, please let us know if that's something. They're just one-minute videos or less. Uh, just something we put out there. We're doing them anyways. We're doing them on Facebook. We're doing them on Instagram. Uh, so we're doing them so we can post them on there. Uh, doing the separate channel gets kind of confusing for me sometimes. I'll accidentally post the wrong thing on the wrong channel. <laughs> um, I have to sign out and then sign back in. And so it gets kind of confusing. So yeah, just let me know if you like the shorts or not. Um, if you don't like the shorts, just, you know, maybe one of those things where I'm just not going to watch the short. I watch your long form videos. Don't bother me really. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about starting to post a couple of shorts or maybe one a day or something like that because I'm already making them. So uh, what would it hurt? It won't hurt anything. It really won't. And uh, it just um, it just, just got confusing with just having so many channels. I and mean, it was just anyway. So I just wanted to bring that out there. So if you start seeing the shorts, can I say I'm seeing the feedback right now and it's just everybody loves the shorts. So and I, I thought I could tell that on the one with the. The Halloween one I did with Peaches, which is a older video I made a few years ago, and I turned it into a short or a reel yesterday, and I just love that video. <laughs> I just love that video. It's one of my favorite ones I've ever made, and I knew there's a lot of people out there that hadn't seen it yet. So, um, and that's real life. Peaches got in our <laughs> Halloween stuff. It was. That was so funny. I mean, it wasn't oh, funny to me. It wasn't funny to you at the time, but yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> it's funny now. It's funny now. It's funny. It now. really is. But I'm gonna tell you something. If she was sleeping on our porch like she was back yeah. then, she'd be doing the same thing. Right. Because she know, would. She just she has she something pumpkins. against has something against Halloween. She loves the pumpkin. Well, I just, love pumpkin pie. It just so happens that we are going to do that um, the uh, pumpkin it, challenge. The pumpkin challenge. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet or not, where they stick the pumpkin in where their chickens, and the chickens carve out the pumpkin, and they show what the chickens carve out. We're going to do that one tomorrow. We are. Yeah. And so you and I were at the store, and we mm -hmm. picked up two pumpkins. We did. We said we would do one for the Saramas, even though we don't think they're going to do much to it. Right. And we're going to do one for the big chickens. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. So me, Carl, and I went yesterday afternoon. I saw the extra pumpkin. What was that for? It was unplanned. Uh-huh. But she knew that you and I were going to do the pumpkin challenge. Oh. And so she says she don't think that her, her pigeons will peck it, uh -huh. but she wants to see. Why not? So it's going to be all around the farm. Now I'm going to tell you what's going to happen if Peachy gets a hold of one. <laughs> we'll show you what Peaches carves out She's of She's going to make Freddy Krueger on the front of that. <laughs> you ain't going to see nothing but the stem. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she loves some pumpkins. But she what does. people are doing is just taking like a vegetable peeler or something and, and kind of getting it started. Yeah. Scraping the yeah. edge of the skin off, giving That's it right. a little eye and a nose, and then letting the chickens do the decorating. And the chickens do the rest. I'm and curious it, to see how it's going to turn I out. I think yeah. that it's, 
I, you know, I've seen several people that have done it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's always interesting to see what, what kind of pumpkin your chickens are going to decorate. I'm curious to see what ours are going to do. We thought about doing it midday, midday, today. but I knew we've already fed them. They've already had their treat for the morning. The sun was shining. They were I seeking like, shelter. I was like, yeah, let's wait until the morning. I'm not going to give them any scratch in the morning. That's right. And we're going to put those pumpkins out there and see what they do. Well, they sure don't deserve an award because they they just don't lay any eggs. They're not laying eggs right now. <laughs> they won't lay eggs, I don't believe, when the season does come back around. That's right. We just have a bunch of ornamental chickens, freeloading hens that are, well, I would say good for nothing, but we enjoy watching them. We so enjoy them. They're, I guess they are good for something. I call them my feather friends when I go out there and feed them. Well, that's that's a good thing because I'm calling these Rhode Island Reds my feathered friends because they're actually going to give something they're in return. Give you, you know, I'm editing a video for tomorrow, uh -huh. and I was going back, going through the footage, uh -huh. and there's one in there. It's a rooster? I, I hope it is. I because think it is a rooster. I really do think it's a rooster. I think I need more than 12, so if it's a rooster, <laughs> I'm not going to complain. I you know, I miss the days when we were known as the Chicken Channel. and You know, somebody, I saw somebody post the other day. They said, oh, I miss you and Brooke and Mary Carl hatching eggs in the incubator. Yeah. I miss that so much. And, you know, since we moved, we couldn't hatch eggs in the camper. That's right. Um, we had nowhere else. That. We tried it in the barn, and that was a total failure. No. But um, we got a garage now. We do got a garage now. Yep. It's this. Not, and we have I to mean, move some stuff around. You know, you could you could play hopscotch and get get to where you need. We to could go. actually have a paintball gun tournament in the, in our garage because there's several places you could you can hide and you know what I mean. We were we were videoing this morning and I was taking care of the Rhode Island Red Pullets. That's right. And I told Jason ahead of time. I said, please don't show all this junk in the garage. And I know that y'all know that we are real life people That's and right. we have junk just like everybody else does, but I really wish I could get it under control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I'm so overwhelmed. Yeah. I just, you know, I think to myself, what you doing? I was saying it's slow. I thought I put slow mode on. It's on. Okay. Sorry. Just checking. Uh, um, I'll go out there and I'll think, well, I've got a pile that needs to go to the barn. Mm -hmm. I've got a pile that needs to be donated. I've got a pile that I don't know what to do with, but here's my problem. I got a pile up here that doesn't tell me when to start or what to do. Yeah. You, I could tell today you're a little frustrated. I just shut the door and I walk away. Yeah. I mean, my, this, this... my car would be just lovely parked in the garage. Well, see, I look at things different, but it may be because because I was a service manager and parts manager at the dealership. Maybe that, but I, I break things down. I know most people are like you. You see it. The, you go in there into the garage, just huge, where we well, undumped Jason. all the pods. But I look at it like, well, we got the kitchen stuff, so I narrow it down into little small projects. So we yeah, got the kitchen I mean stuff. So we just do this, and once we get that accomplished. Then you feel like you've accomplished something. So I did organize everything into those certain piles. And I feel like yeah. once we ever get our cabinet doors the, put on. That you're right. Now, the cabinet doors are a big thing. I cannot move all that kitchen stuff into my cabinets knowing that they have to put the doors on. I agree. The cabinet because doors are a big thing. When they go to, to drill into my cabinets, the sawdust is going to get all mm -hmm. inside of you're it. You're right. I'll have to take everything out. You're right. And I'm not doing it twice. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, well, the end of this week will be when he said that they're supposed to be ready. Yeah. The end of this week. We so, may want to send him a text and just, just make him, you know, we're still here. We're still here. <laughs> I think I'll let you handle it. I'll handle it. Mm -hmm. We'll send him a text. Okay. We'll send him a text. Well, I will say this. We're a no-go on our stair railing. Yeah, no go on a stair rail. And we think the, we, we said think, that in the last video. I don't think. We know, I know. pretty sure now that, um, yeah, that uh, it got I gave us. Mm -hmm. him a deposit to get started, which anybody that has a project to do needs a deposit. Right. And I had no hesitation doing so because I knew that he was, 
you know, he had tried to buy a welding shop mm-hmm. from a guy I know, and it ended up he didn't. He, long story short, he didn't buy the welding shop. He ended up continuing on to work out of his. I guess he works out of his house. He does so. a lot of mobile welding. But um, I called him and I told him if he did not have the railing installed by October the 12th, which was granddaddy's birthday, Mm -hmm. then I needed my deposit back. And so that was the deadline. I hate to not, even though we had a deadline of the railing being installed six weeks after he took the deposit, which was July the 26th, I still wanted him to know, you know, I'm announcing to my people that you did not do what you said you're going to do if you don't, you know, have it installed by the end of the day on 10, 12, 22. Right. No response. No response. So. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it makes me sick to know that somebody operates that way. Right. Um, he's out of Elmore County, which is down the road from us. And mm-hmm. since since this has been going on, I've read a lot of reviews that have been posted since we hired him and a lot of negative, a lot of negative, a lot of, he has not followed through with what but he it was, said he was but it kind of came after it well, wasn't, it wasn't like before. It wasn't like these, it no. was like, it was like, he it, has, was, it was like a week after we hired him. All of a sudden this started coming on. I started reading the reviews that he was building pool railing for me. He told me, and then he would go back and respond to the reviews. You never asked for your deposit back and things like that. So I know that it's just to take the money and run because he wouldn't be responding to the comments if that was not the case. Right. So, um, Hmm. yeah, I'm kind of sick about it, but you know, it is what it is. That's right. I can't change it. We can't change it, so it is what it is, and I will be taking him to small claims court, though. And we will, um, we will go from there and find us another person to do our handrail. Yeah, Nick at Chestnut Hills told me that he knows several he knows people somebody. that yeah. can do it. Right, and maybe I should just let Nick handle the whole job for me because obviously I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you was recommended by somebody we liked, so yeah, it's all good. It is all good. Other good thing though is, is your handrail didn't get put in, but two things got put in. What's that? Your pantry. Oh yeah, pantry shelving got put in. And your backsplash. We did a live since then. No, we did a live on that Friday night, and the pantry got finished on Saturday. Yep. Okay, so I have a pantry. That's a reason to smile. It turned out phenomenal. Yes. Roberto and Heidel are lucky. Just we lucked up when we found those guys. So lucky. when we, Yeah, they're, they're awesome. Um, they did just what we wanted them to do. They did. At a, a cost-effective manner. <laughs> With, I had the idea in my head, and I drew it out on paper, and it turned out just like, just like I'd envisioned it. And I only had to take back take back four pieces of lumber. Yes. So that's not too bad. It's not too bad. I only had to take back four which pieces. Is, which is good because most of the time since we've been doing all this, you know, that we're always short. Um, and so like in the middle of something, you have to go and go. We have to I'm go. I'm just glad I knew where the receipt was because the company that I bought it from would yeah. not have taken it back and y'all it was a it was a one by 12 this was crazy it was a one by 12 piece of spruce that jason had drawn up to kind of be the dividers for support but they didn't need it, it ended up being strong enough yeah they, they didn't need yeah. it but these one by 12s were 40 dollars a piece one by 12 that were spruce yeah one by 12 by 12 mm-hmm. is what the footage was Forty dollars a piece, and I could have bought a two by twelve by twelve for twenty dollars a piece. So a two by twelve was twenty dollars. A one by twelve was forty dollars. Isn't that crazy? It, 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 I didn't hesitate to take it back. I'll tell you that. Crazy. I was kind of glad that they didn't use it because I didn't want to buy them in the begin with. When the guy told me the price of them, I just about fell out on the floor. Yeah, uh, you, you did, but I ended thought, up taking them back. So ended up being good. <laughs> yeah, ended up taking them back. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you are you going? You're probably going to do a video about your pantry. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of wasn't going to talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay though. But you know, if I have a lot of content in mind, yeah. So if we're only doing one video a month. It'll be Wait. Christmas. I mean, one video yeah. a week. It'll be Christmas before I get to the pantry. So it's probably a good thing we did talk about it. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Well, this is what happens. This is what happens. And anybody that's a creator like us, uh, any of them, Daniel, Lester, the head family farm, uh, Wes and Angie, it, all of us, we all, this is what happens is, is you'll have weeks where you'll have something going on every single day and you get so bombarded and it, it, it becomes like a wall's closing in on you because you got so much content to put out. And, and it has know, to be done then because the, the story is now. Yeah. Story's now. So if you, if you wait until the next video, or whatever, then it just kind of starts piling up. But then three weeks from now, you'll be racking your brain trying to figure out what you're trying you're to figure out what you're going to do because <laughs> you don't have really anything going on. So anyways, that's the roller coaster ride that we all go through. But yeah, you're right. If you if you, if you record that and don't put it out, then yeah. it's going to be mean, way on down the line. Yeah. And you'll be like, you're just not getting your picture put in <laughs> and it's Christmas. <laughs> well, it got put in in, well, October, 1st of October. That's right. But I love it. I mean, it's 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 not anything. Hey, Gidget. It is pretty. It's not anything super fancy, which I don't need anything fancy. I it's just, not. I wanted my food in my pantry mm -hmm. and my my cookware in my kitchen. That's right. And that's going to happen. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. I even, the pantry even got a spot now where we can, uh, the coffee, got a little coffee spot in there now instead of being in the kitchen itself, it's in the pantry. And a lot of people wanted to know if we were going to put our freeze dryer in our pantry. And we are not. And i tell you why. It's because the pantry door stays closed most of the time. And that freeze dryer, when it's being used, it needs to be able to breathe. Yeah, probably so. Am I so. right? Probably so. So it to be stuffed in there with cabinets surrounding it would... And we and we and we may... We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it may, we, the first shelf may not be tall enough either. Because it's 20 inches. What are they doing? I don't know. You just, <laughs> just ignore them. Just ignore them. So, yeah, it's um <laughs> the freeze dryer is going to stay in the garage for now. For now. And, and we got a spot for it. We do. Yeah. We have a perfect spot That's for right. it in the garage. And I think it I think it'll work out in there. I think so too. Without taking any space in my pantry. Yeah. I think so too. If if um if not, we can try the pantry out. We'll see. We'll see. I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what should go where. You know, speaking of the freeze dryer, there is a promo code right now. Gosh, and I don't know it. I no, should probably don't, shouldn't don't, have said uh -uh, anything. Uh-uh. What's well, the end of the month? I'll try to make a post tomorrow for everybody to see. There's a promo code right now on the freeze dryers that'll get you, I think it's $100 off. And it was probably in our newsletter. If you don't sign up for our newsletter, uh, you may want to check into that too. And it, you know, we have a lot of people say, had somebody today. Um, I haven't, when, when you post in the video, I haven't seen the video. When you post in the video, what's your schedule? Um, if you haven't gone to our website and subscribed to our newsletter, Jacqueline puts every single video we post that prior week in that in that newsletter, in the every email. one of in that email, you'll get an email with every single video that we posted that week. And so, um, it's just a, it's just a good way to keep up with us. Sorry. <laughs> well, I just knew you didn't know the link. And if you had to stop what you were I doing know. to go find you're it, right. that's not going to work. I know you're right. So you're right. Some things we say, we wish we could take back. And that's why we didn't do lives in the past. Yeah, I just edited it out. <laughs> yeah. He would say, oops, I shouldn't have said that and just edited it out. So Somebody said the freeze dryer puts out too much heat for it to be in the pantry. And that's what probably. I was told. That's probably right. Because we, we we had all, we, we haven't had ours for a long period. Well, I guess we've had it for over a year now, but we were living in a camper for almost a year. So we got it a few months before the big move happened. So we haven't had a 
you know, a big chance of really using it like we want to. The only thing we've really done are fruit. That's right. Yeah. And we the, love it. I love the fruit it puts out. I will say this. Yeah. That I was head over heels for the figs that were freeze dried. Yes. So this past week, Jason has been trying to keep mulch in his fruit orchard where a few of the hens who have babies, they like to let their children run around in the fruit yes. orchard. And I think it's fine. If they want to kick the mulch out, then you just let them kick their mulch out. But Jason thinks he's got to go over there and sweep it all back in. So while he's over there cleaning, tidying up his fruit orchard. And I check it anyway, every day almost anyways. He brings yeah. back a shirt full of ripe figs. Figs are going awesome. And it's not time for figs to be ripe. I mean, if you were, if our fig trees were totally mature, they wouldn't be producing right now. For the most part. No, you'd have sporadic figs. But, not, but not, not full fledged. But the, the one you're talking about is a late. Is a later season fig. Gotcha. And that's how I got them planted. I got the early seasons, and then they get a little bit later, and then a little bit later. So you brought a shirt full of figs up. I did. And you said, taste this. And I've already told y'all that <laughs> I'm not I'm not a big fig lover as them being raw. Yeah. But after we freeze dried them, I fell in love with them. And I mean, I ate literally the, ha the whole Ziploc bag when we were moving back and forth. That's driving. right. They're delicious. I ate a fig that Jason grew, and it was called a green ischia. And I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Tracy, am I saying that right? Because <laughs> I used to, I would call them green ischias, but I know that's wrong, and I think it's ischia is what it is. Well, I will tell y'all this. That fig was absolutely delicious. Yes. I, it knocked the socks off the freeze-dried figs. I love that fig. Matter of fact, I got two spots left for figs, and I was talking to Tracy uh, a couple of weeks ago about what to plant in those spots. And one of them was a Papa John fig, and then there was another one that we ought to plant. And she thought I may should do a Celeste, but I already got the Rourke, which is an improved Celeste. But the Celeste is one of your old timey figs. See, there's Tracy. I'm saying it right. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> yes. But now I'm thinking about one of those spots is going to be another green issue because, man, that is. I, 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 I'm thinking you're wrong. I'm thinking I'm going to drive you over to Petals. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to buy two, two of, of the green issue. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. I mean, y'all, I'm here to tell you that fig was awesome. They're good. And it was beautiful. It is beautiful. It was green on the outside. Yes. And it was, it was the most beautiful pink. It is a strawberry red. It, it, it was beautiful. It is gorgeous. It and really I was, is. I mean, I'm down there like scoping out the tree wondering which one it is because I don't know which one it yeah. is. Scoping out the tree, trying to figure out if there's any more that are ready because that thing was good. They're delicious. Absolutely We're not freeze drying delicious. those. We're going to eat those <laughs> fresh <laughs> off the tree. <laughs> Fresh off the tree. That's right. Yeah, they're good. They that, really are good. They're absolutely delicious. Look at, I see, I see you, Dee Dee. So this back here, the one last week was from another family that sent it to us. This one is the gentleman, gentleman that when we were doing the non-live version of this, mm -hmm. he did our intro. Oh, okay. And he made that for us right He there. made that. Yes. Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> and I'm glad he's on here. I'm glad he saw it. How about that? Yep. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Huh. Yep. So what what are you looking forward to out of the fruit orchard that you want to eat just, just raw? <sighs> okay, so. I'm not talking about cooking with. No, I'm no, talking no, about no, just no. eating I'm, raw. I'm, I love pears and I love Asian pears right off the bat. That's what I'm, but the, what I'm really wanting to eat are the apples, especially the the Fuji apple. And I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, the apples is what I'm looking forward to because here in Alabama, we're known where we, we really can't grow big apples here. Um, it's just we don't get cold enough, so we're, we're limited on apples. So I'm really, really, really leaning towards apples. And apples are kind of finicky. I don't say they're hard to grow. But um, 
they are Arlo. Sorry, <laughs> he's playing the fiddle over here. <laughs> but apples is what I'm is what I'm most most looking forward to right now. Well, before I had that green Eschia yeah. fig, yeah. I would have to say that I'm most looking forward to something we don't even have planted. What's that? Musky dines. Oh, the musky dines. And we're probably, I say that, that's going to be, that's going to be some work putting that in. But, um. <laughs> we already have a berm built, don't you remember? Tracy told you to take advantage of that berm that's yeah, already there. But we're going to put, we were going to put um, uh, stone fruit there if we wanted to. Psh plums and peaches so i guess i won't have any but we could put musky dimes there i guess no that's okay i'll just go down but musky dimes we're gonna go the next the next one we'd have to build was gonna be musky dimes i'll just have to go down to stan and kathy's place in bruton <laughs> and get me some musky dimes off their vines that's right but uh yeah musky dimes we can um i don't know how hard it would be i really don't just the trailer system on it's got to be pretty beefy Er, than I think what we've been doing. I think what is a musky dine? A musky dine is a grape, uh, actually a native grape to our area. Again, musky dine grapes are another thing, kind of like apples. We don't grow many grapes here because it doesn't get cold enough here. Isn't that crazy? That when you think of fruit, in my opinion, you think of warm weather right. and you don't think of cold, but you actually have to have a certain amount of of Chill hours. Chill hours. And here in Alabama, we don't get those kind of chill hours for certain fruits. And, and I'm going to say this. Yeah. Thank God we don't. <laughs> thank goodness. I am not looking forward to the temperatures <sighs> to come in Alabama this week. Yeah. Do you know what the high is on T on 60? Oh, my gracious. I am not looking forward to this at all. I think it's 60. I wonder if anybody will let me come stay with them for a week or so. Now, one 59 point, degrees. Yeah, 59 degrees. For the high on Tuesday. Now, we did. They were going to stay. At one time, said it was going to get low at 33, but now that's gone up to 37 is the lowest now. And it's just, this is our winners. It doesn't matter to me. If it's got a three in front of oh, it, yeah. that's freezing. But it goes, but the high that day is 60. So 59 deer. So that's, that's a that's a, almost a 20 degree jump, and it's only for two days, and it goes right back to being 50 at night. So, but those two days yeah. are enough for us to have to winterize the aviary, right? To add heat for the Victorian crown pigeons, right? Because they can't handle below 40 temperatures. So allegedly, Mary Carl and I. Well, they did because they survived a snowstorm in at Texas. the previous. Mm -hmm previous owners but we're going to do everything we can to to have that aviary beefed up and ready right that way we can roll the plastic up on the warmer days and let it back down on the colder days yeah, that's right oh my goodness i don't look forward to it. cold cold weather i don't like it well you know not too long ago you said that you didn't like the hot i scratched <laughs> everything i said about that because, you don't like our hot summers anymore well I like the hot summer more so than the cold. Okay. No matter what. I got I you. I still like the hot better than the cold. I got you. <laughs> no, 59 is not cold. Most of you are probably laughing, thinking that's not cold, but I just don't like it. It's, it starts, that's that's intro, introduction of being cold for us. <laughs> that is, that is wintertime here. <laughs> we just don't have a cold winter, and... Uh, it's a short winter. We have a short. We do have some really cold days, but it's short lived. It's not long. So it's I really opened a uh, box the other day of my kitchen storage stuff. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. And I found a pair of dishwashing gloves that I had that come up to here. And you know what I said? What? Those are going to come in handy because I'm wearing gloves under these and then those on top of it. And I can clean waters out. My hands won't get cold. Yeah. And once we get everything situated, it'd be nice to get our cleaning station put back up. I was yeah. thinking about that while we were outside today. But, that, you know, there's no point in putting it up till we it realize is. where everything's going to go. It is. It, we have to, we'll build it and put it up. And at the end, it could be three months from now. We're tearing it all back down and putting it in a 
more permanent locations. So I mean, water lines have to be ran to yeah. it. It's just, it's a lot of things that need to be done. It is. And I don't want to be doing it twice. I understand. So I'm going to hang out on the ground and clean the waters with my dish gloves on <laughs> until we figure out what we're going to do. <laughs> we'll get it figured out. I mean, we have plans of taking fences down, relocating mm -hmm. fences. Yep. And things that y'all don't necessarily see on the camera. We right. have our wheels turned out. I don't know when we're ever going to do these things, but we have well, we, ideas. There's some things that we need to get done first yes. before we get that. And, you know, like today, this afternoon, the driveway situation. Yeah. So that's coming. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that. Priorities. Uh, priorities. And then the driveway being one of the main things we're trying to get done right now is definitely is get the driveway Fixed. That's right. Or say fixed. Built. We don't really have a driveway. Oh, we don't have yeah. a driveway at all. We don't. We don't. Um, I mean, we still have a board out in front of our front porch that we walk on for wet keep the weather. Mud, yeah. To keep the mud down because <laughs> we right. don't have any grass out That's right. front. So, yeah, first things first, we, we realize the importance of <laughs> washing waters on the ground until we get... What is that? That's a text. Oh, until we um, get things in order. Yeah. So probably in the next two to three weeks, we'll have a driveway. We will, yeah. but we won't have a watering station. We won't have a watering station, but we will have a driveway. And we'll have that um, pigeon aviary winterized. Yes. <laughs> I guarantee <laughs> you we'll have that done. Uh, somebody said, Brooke, drink a lot of hot chocolate. It'll keep you warm. I love coffee. I love coffee, but you're it has. A, huh? You're not a hot chocolate fan. I'm not fan. a hot chocolate fan. We have a new um, coffee place here in Chilton County, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to say it because when we were last with Nick and Zoe, yeah. they said it totally different, and I can't remember how they said it. We called it Eleanor's, but that's not <laughs> how she said it. It's probably something like Louise or something. We don't. We're just saying it all wrong. Well, we're known to say stuff wrong, but I tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, I got in big trouble last week. Why? Big trouble by the, the, the grammar police. Oh, well, what'd you say? I said, I was, I was talking about the goats because, you know, and I, not, you I, I wormed them? Yeah, I, I didn't get uh, near as trouble as it did when we leave the L and in, in, in salmon or salmon. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get, I didn't get in that much trouble. But I got in a little bit of trouble, and that is, I was supposed to say regimen, and it, it, I said regiment. Oh. Yeah, so I got in, I got in trouble. Well, yeah. you do things like that a as lot. often as I do. I do it a lot. Oh. <laughs> I, I do don't it a say lot. anything because. You know, the whole, the, 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 the salmon thing, when well, I got in trouble about that, so I, I, I went off and I looked this up. And this is crazy, y'all. This is crazy. The English language makes zero sense. Why is there L there if it's if it if you don't even say it? So it makes zero sense. So I looked this up. Mm -hmm. Salmon. How in the world did it go from salmon to salmon? Here it is. Here's the story. So it's from the uh the uh Arlo, the Latin version, or that what they say in Latin America. They say that the L is there. The L, they say salmon with the L. Okay. So the French, when the word got over to the French, they took the L out, but they spelled it without the L. Hmm. But then it comes over to America. Just take his collar off. And when we get a hold of it, guess what we do? Put the L back in. We put we, the L back in, and then we, don't say we it. then we don't say it. <laughs> so how crazy is that? So originally you hear the L, and the L's there. The French get the word, take the L out. Don't and the L's not pronounced. Then us Americans get the word. We throw the L back in, and we don't say it. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, that makes zero sense. I want to know what person come up with that. I took two years of Latin. Yeah. And I didn't know any of that. <laughs> well, I didn't know until I Googled it. <laughs> That's funny. Isn't it crazy? Absolutely crazy. It does not make 
the English language is bizarre. And I still say if if we see salmon, I, I put the L in it still. To it's, this okay. Day. it's okay. It's <laughs> okay. Those those that complain, they probably want to say the L too. It's just they forgot. Yeah, it's funny. It's hard for us to say things that we've said all of our life. Our ain't, parents have said. Ain't that the truth? And you're supposed to all, to all of a sudden know how to say it correctly? It's crazy. It's crazy. And you know what's so funny to me is that we're all, you know, I say we all. A lot of our viewers aren't. But we're in the United States. And this little portion of the United States says something one way. And this portion of the United States says something completely different. And this portion says something different than the other two. It's just weird. I mean, it's just crazy. It's like we're all in little countries. Well, I, I will tell you something that I noticed somebody say out loud the other day. And I kind of giggled to myself because they said Illinois. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we know that one now. I always say <laughs> Illinois. Yeah, it's Illinois. It's Illinois. It's no S on the end no of it. No S. But this person in a public area that was speaking yeah said illinois and i said they said it they said it <laughs> they said it but i just, put the s on in it that's right like my grandma with my nanny she just wall marks well <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know what they're talking about we know what they're talking about and that's all that matters mm -hmm. is that you get your point across and and you know what you're saying if you said it wrong then so be it. It's okay. It's funny to me because you know, I actually think, matter of fact, it was um with that uh, video conference that we had several months ago in Oklahoma, and um the people that spoke there that were teaching, uh, we were all together and uh, talking about how um to make something a character in your in your videos, you know, because all of our animals have names and their characters and and I even told them, I said, you know, you know, you can even go beyond something physical being a character. The way I talk and the way I mispronounce words are actually a character of our show, if you think about it. Yeah, you're right. They are. I mean, so it's um, so it's just. I used to back when we first started doing lives and uh, well, no, 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 I'm taking that back. Bert, back when we first started recording podcasts and you yeah. edited them, right? I tried to make sure that everything I said was correct and that I spoke in a proper way. Yes. And I said, you know what? After time went on, I said, you know what? I'm not worried about what anybody thinks of me. Right. Because if I was worried about... Now, that may sound strange because I do mention negative comments from time to time, but that doesn't mean that I'm worried about what somebody thinks of me. That's right. I am who I am. And the sooner any of us quit worrying about what somebody else thinks of us, the faster we will mature and live a much better life. That's right. And I, you know, I try to instill that into me, Carl. If, if nothing else, don't worry about what other people think of you. That's you right. live for yourself. A a absolutely. And I, I do think that that is one of her strong points at being 12 years old. Almost 13. I don't want to think about that, but <laughs> Me either. that's a very vulnerable part of your life as far as what people think about you. It is. But I really do think that that she does not care. I feel what like people think about her at all. That that part of my trying to get across to her has really hit home. I think so, too. And it, if if that's the only thing that hit home. I feel like I've made a major accomplishment because it's such a big deal today mm -hmm. to, to don't worry about what other people think about you. Right. And now if it's, you know, if it's a, you doing something that's dangerous, of course, that's a whole nother story, but I'm talking about just, just your whole demeanor about yourself. Right. And I know you, for an example, mm -hmm. you used to be worried about your eye. Oh yeah. And what people thought about mm -hmm. you. And if somebody was looking at it or you knew that somebody was looking at you because of that. Right. I have never noticed your eye. Yeah. But you know, you're self-conscious about your own and self. And that's what yeah. I'm trying to say. This, yeah. The minute that you got over the physical attribute of your eye being 
a little different. Right. And realizing, hey, that's just a part of me. That's right. It is what it is. I can't do anything to change it. And you're just going to either have to stare at it and try to figure out what it is. Because I don't care. That's right. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're all different we're all different and we're, we're all, all human and we all bleed red there is no different in any one of us than another that's right absolutely mary carl and i have been watching this series and I, i'm gonna butcher what it's called um bizarre bodies I think or that something. was right is that what it's called sounds good to me well it's on um discovery plus i do believe mm -hmm. and it's a series that that shows people that have abnormalities mm -hmm. and while we're not watching it for entertainment, we're watching it for educational experience because we like to know what causes this, what causes that. And that is a good medical way to, to, you know, figure things out. So watching that show with her and her never, never giggling, never thinking anything was um, funny, which is what, kids tend to do uh -huh. made me realize that she she she's not that kind of person but we're doing a good job we're doing a good job because those right. people oh my goodness it takes all kinds we're all different if i see somebody on the street that that looks like one of those people i may turn around because that's our human nature yeah but that doesn't mean i'm gonna go right and whisper about that's it. right because everybody's, everybody's the same on the inside, no matter what happens on the outside. That's right. Absolutely, girl. I'm done. You're done. I'm done with my talking about. <laughs> I didn't intend on talking about that either. Oh, well, just, we don't, we don't know what we're talking about. No, we don't. And we just jump on here and I hit that little live button and then it's off to the races. <laughs> it's whatever comes Y'all don't out. know what's going, what may or may not come out of our mouths. I'm telling you. That's just a fact or, of life. Or way this show's going to go. Which direction? Well, you want to talk about going to visit Granddaddy? We can. Absolutely. If y'all missed that video, my Granddaddy turned a whopping 100 years old or young, however you want to say it. That's right. On um, 10, 12, 22. <laughs> yep. October 12th. And, you know... To be a hundred years old, he sure, I mean, his mind is just as sharp as it can be. Um, you know, he's he has a walker now, but he didn't have a walker last year. So, you know, he, he just, he's, I guess he's a hundred years old. Those tires have got a hundred years on. But um, other than that, he's just as sharp and gets around and does whatever he wants to do for the most part that almost anybody else can do. He um, has macular degeneration. Yeah. So he lost his um, vision. It didn't happen overnight, but he gradually started losing it. I can't remember what age he told me. I'm trying to think when all that happened and went down. Um, Gosh. 20, 20 something years ago. I guess it was. Um, I did a lot of, taking him to and from the eye doctor, yep. driving him back and forth That's because right. he was, his keys were taken from him and they very well should have been mm -hmm. because his vision was not to where he had a terrible wreck and he, he turned in front of somebody and it was just because his vision was not what it once was. Right. So after that, the family took his keys from him. Of course, that was the best thing to do, but he didn't have a spouse. Yes. So he didn't have anybody, you know, that could take, that could tend to him and, and see about taking him places. Right. But his sister did live with him. Yes. And so it was just him and his sister and she did not feel comfortable driving in a big city. Mm -hmm. And his eye doctors were in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. So I took, I didn't have, Mary Carl wasn't born at the time and I wasn't rec working a regular job. So I took him to a lot of eye doctor appointments and got to know him very, very well. Right. Um, I can't tell y'all the number of times that I filled out his paperwork at the doctor's office and his birth date was 10, 12, 22. And that's just way. That's that, how you know it. That's how I always say 10, 12, 22, because yep. he was born in 22 and this is 2022. That's right. So, um, yes, I, I feel very, 
blessed to be able to know him as well as I do yep. and feel like I, I feel like he's my granddaddy. I saw one of our biggest viewers, John, uh, mentioned World War II, and Granddaddy was in World War II. Um, he does not, matter of fact, he, he's never talked about it to anybody. And if any everybody ever brought it up, he shut the conversation down right then and there. Um, he does. He doesn't even go to like where they have you know events or whatever where they show respects to and to veterans and all that. He has nothing to do with that. Um, Oh, got a spammer here. Let me get him out. But um, he did open up to me about it one time, and um, and I I don't want to get into it. But he he had a what he did in World War Two was rough, and uh, so he is a veteran of World War Two. Yeah, I I brought it up on one of our our trips to Birmingham, and I asked a few questions, and I could tell immediately that he didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. And he had the opportunity to go to the VA hospital and he did not take advantage of that. He wanted nothing to do with any of the benefits that were offered. Yes. And I don't know the reasoning behind it, but I just know it's not something he wants to talk about. Yep. So we would just close that book and know that he, he did what he was supposed to. Mm -hmm. So granddaddy's sister lived with them until she passed away. And that was probably what six years ago or so? Fanny passed away. Yes. Yeah. Within the last gosh, it don't seem like it's been that long ago, but it probably has. It has been yeah. that long ago. His sister passed away, but granddaddy remarried it 17 years ago. He remarried to a lady that takes excellent care of him and, and he's very much in love with and she's very much in love with him. Uh, Miss Shirley. And I, well, I think it's just a wonderful thing that they found each yeah, other. Yeah, I do too. And that he was able to continue his life in happiness and and her too. Her too. I mean, she's she's younger than him. I'm not sure how much younger she I'm not is. Not sure much, but I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. And I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh because it, it but it, it, you know, you think of somebody, you know, she's a good bit younger than him, but he's a hundred. So to me, she's still. <laughs> I think she's probably about 80. Yeah. <laughs> she's probably about 20 years younger than him. And just as healthy as he is. Yeah. yeah I mean, she she's is. a go-getter. She um she drives him everywhere he yeah. needs to go or wants to go. That's or, right. And and they're just the perfect match. So mm -hmm. I just I, I love the fact that at well, let's see, he would have been 83 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. At 83, he remarried. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that just goes to show you that he didn't give up and he kept, you know, I, I, I know that he loved your nanny dearly, mm -hmm. but that, that chapter closed and he was able to, to put a new. Yeah, that's awesome. Especially at 83 years 83 old. 83 years old. Do you remember going to this wedding? <laughs> I do. I remember like yesterday. Yes. <laughs> 83 years old. 83 years old and got remarried. Got remarried. And that, that tells you right then what. And y'all saw him at, at 100, and I did a video with him a couple of years ago. Um, y'all saw him at 100. Y'all can only imagine him at, at 83. I'm telling y'all, my granddaddy, before his accident, had a head of cattle and bailed his own hay, took loaded the cattle up, took them to the stockyard. He did all that. And you're talking about in his 80s. Yes, he did. And there were there were times where I wouldn't hesitate to pick up the phone if I needed to ask him something about something we were doing or whatever. He was the best advice giver because he'd yeah. been there and done that. Yeah, a lot of garden knowledge, too. That was one thing that I remember getting a lot from him was a lot of garden knowledge. Um, I mean, he had a garden last year. He did. And I saw a lot of people say, what about a raised bed? Well, here's the thing is yeah. his vision's not there and he gets used to where things are located and he would have to learn that all over again. And I just don't know. I just don't know if he could tend to it like it needs to be tended to. Yeah. I and I know. feel but like we're going to have plenty. So I feel like it would put extra pressure on Shirley to feel like it yeah. needed to be maintained. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to so. do that. We got, we got, we'll have plenty. So we'll just provide for mm -hmm. them and make him feel like he's, Living, growing a garden virtually. That's right. That's right. 
Absolutely. And I know he's got stuff put back too because he, he canned every year. Oh, yeah. he told us that he came over here and I That's think right. we talked like, about that. A week or two ago. He came yeah. over here. He um he got a young man that lives near them to drive him and Shirley over here because she didn't know where she was going. Granddaddy, of course, didn't either. And this mm -hmm. this guy knew how to get here. So <laughs> he was drove over here and he told us that while he couldn't plant a garden anymore, he could still can and put up. That's right. He said, so y'all get y'all give me anything you want to. Anything you want. That's so right. Put it up. But uh he's uh he's something I mean this was when he didn't have his eyesight. This was about three to four years ago. He completely redid uh I don't know what year that John Deere that uh, John Deere tractor is but it's old. It's the uh, gray and red one mm -hmm. he he redid it and restored it i'm talking like re replaced everything to be replaced on it engine wise part wise and he painted that thing it's just amazing he me. painted it it is absolutely awesome absolutely awesome but i will say this that that energizer bunny gene that he's got is in is in my side of the family because my dad doesn't stop i don't stop so that's three generations right there yeah that you know we just we just you just wind us up in the morning and then we just go all day and then in the even times we crash and then we wind back up again. <laughs> he um he's had two hip replacements and knee replacements and knee replacements mm -hmm. and then he's had multiple surgeries on his eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, just just a lot of he's been through a lot. He's been through a lot and he shows no signs of it. Zero. <laughs> you wouldn't know that he had ever had. No. And then no. he he had a heart. He Ooh, had farm his, tractor. You're right. He had his last heart stent put in at 97. Yeah. And the doctor told him <laughs> that funny. he was the oldest person that he had ever put a stent in. The doctor didn't want to do it. And granddaddy said, well, look, I just had one done a couple of years ago. What difference does two what, years make? That's right. He's like, what difference does it make? So <laughs> he's got, he, he, could, he told me like three oh, heart stents. Yeah. And he goes every six months to the heart doctor. And his, so far he's in the clear. So. That's unreal. You know, that just unreal. goes to show you how much how much heart uh, research has changed in a short amount of time. Unreal. You can put a stent in and keep on ticking. Keep on going. It's not that big of a deal and it's anymore. It's not that big of a deal anymore. Not like it used to be. No. Yeah. Absolutely unreal. Uh, speaking of garden, our garden, I need to go. You haven't seen it. You're not the gardener. I'm not the gardener. If you follow us, you know Brooke's not the gardener. She's the, the tractor guru. She that's her thing. She wants to be on that tractor. <laughs> Speaking of, I'm gonna do a reel of what you did on that tractor today. You we'll must try, have been impressed. I'm gonna try to get that out tomorrow if I can <laughs> and put it on the shorts. It'll be near the Facebook shorts. But <laughs> I got tickled. I, I got, can do anything you, on that you, tractor. Brooke's mentality is before I talk about the garden <laughs> and the tractor is, is it? Works smarter, not harder. She thinks that tractor is an excavator, is a bulldozer, is a tractor, is a backhoe, is a ditch witch. Is it's never <laughs> proved me wrong, has it? Sometimes. No. Yes. Oh. And so I get tickled about what she gets in her head that she thinks that the tractor can do, you know, and push it to its limits. And today was one of those crazy ideas that I thought, oh, man, this ain't going to work. <laughs> well, I saw you pull the camera out, and I thought to myself, go on, old boy, oh. pull that camera out, because you're fixing to see what old Orange can do. I knew. As soon as you pulled that camera out, I said, he thinks it's not going to work, I and I'm fixing to show well, him. Well, here's the thing. I thought, this is, I was tickled, and I thought, if it works, it's going. this is going to be funny, and people need to see it. <laughs> that's what i was thinking so yeah well i will try to get that out tomorrow i never had any doubt that it wouldn't work. but you have the the garden those little seedlings we planted i've seen them from the road they're like they're, they've grown you know mary carl and i left yesterday yeah, and yeah. i told you we went and got the other right. pumpkin when we turned out mary carl said mama look how big those plants are they're big 
they are big. They are doing wonderfully. Um, I was worried about, you know, the soil. I don't know anything about this. So we had it tested. We know we're very acidic. Uh, we put lime out there. But in, bulk, in the garden area. With your tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Which was awesome, by the way. If we would have done that, we know the reason we're going to do that by hand. And we're like, let's just invest in a cedar. And how much have we used that thing since we've had it? That cedar. We seeded all of the, yeah. the pond. We Things seeded, we couldn't have done by hand. No way. We seeded all around here with winter ryegrass. We're going to seed all this with um, probably Bermuda grass once everything's done. Uh, we've done a lot of fertilizing with it. We've done a lot of lime with it. So, yeah, that was, that was a great so investment. So, let me ask you this. Yes. Yesterday, right. we had three bales of hay yeah. on the trailer. Was right. it yesterday? It was or the yesterday. day before? Mm -hmm. So, um, I went... I told you that I well I didn't tell you anything. I told I went to the barn mm -hmm. and I took my bucket off. Yeah, I took my bucket off the front of my tractor mm -hmm. and I put an attachment on that holds a hay spear. Mm -hmm. And I came back and I never asked for any help or told Jason what I was doing. And I took the took the hay off with the hay spear mm -hmm. and I put it where it needed to go. And when I got finished, I went back down to the barn. And took that attachment off and put my bucket back on. Right. And I bet you thought I needed help, didn't you? Mm -mm. Oh, you didn't? Mm -mm, I didn't think you need help. Okay. If you need help, you'll let me know. Usually I know when I need to help. Well, Usually. And the, the that Kubota now is very user-friendly when it comes to, to taking stuff on and off with. So you, um, you've you gotten pretty good at getting that bucket on and off. Yeah, I can, I yeah. can do that. Yeah, you got I pretty good at that. that bucket coming and on. And I can off. get stuff off the trailer, too. Yeah, you can get stuff off the trailer <laughs> too. <laughs> well, well it's the original plan with so we're moving. We had a we have a it's a thirty foot no forty. Well, it's thirty foot pieces. Yeah, it's a thirty foot. Um, what do you call it? Owning owning shed. or shed. Um, we bought this before we left the little farm. And we never had a chance to get it put up before we moved over here. Thank goodness. So, thank goodness, because that would have been the... Whew. We would have left it. <sighs> or our plans was to park the Airstream up under it, was mm -hmm. the plan when we lived at the other farm. So we moved it all here piece by piece, and there's 10 pieces of metal that's probably what? 30 foot long. Get you scrawling. 30 foot... Well, it's 30 foot long, but how wide is it, you reckon? The pieces of metal, three foot. Is it three foot wide? Mm -hmm. It seemed wider than three foot. But yeah. anyways... Three foot wide. And if you ever dealt with metal, that one piece don't seem that heavy, but three pieces are like really heavy. Um, so it was 10 pieces, 30 foot long. And I think you, I didn't know it was 30 foot long and you was thinking it was 20 foot I long. thought it was 20 and we had cut 10 foot off of it. So you said, let's put the forks on there and <laughs> I'm going to slide my tractor under there and I'm going to pick these pieces up and we ain't going to have to even worry about loading it. I was like, I think it's going to do like 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 a like a bat, it's just gonna flop over like that. Well, then when you got over there and you slid on there and lifted it up, and I realized then real quick that wasn't twenty foot long. <laughs> and well, then, you know, it might would have worked if I had been in the center of it and we had had a way to hold it on each end. We could have, maybe we got it on there though. We got it on there. We got we loaded yeah. it up by hand. Yeah, on the trailer. We did load it on there by hand on the trailer. And then the rest of it is going to be in the video. <laughs> there wasn't no sense in, the, in taking it off. In piece the by shorter piece. reel that uh, both short and reel that we that I'm going to make probably tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. All right, you want to answer a few questions? We can answer a few questions. You know I can't see them, so it's okay. Uh, let's see here. Where's the airstream now? The airstream is here. It is parked down by the barn. Yeah. And we contemplated selling it at one point because we kind of feel like that's a project we may not ever get to. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm i going to get to it. At some point, we'll get back on the airstream. We're going to get sure. back on it. Yep. We've got new axles that need to be bolted on. Yeah. And I just, I just love an airstream. I mean... There is not one time we don't pass one on the road that all three of us say Airstream. 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 Yep. Airstream. That's right. Airstream. Because we just love it. So We do love the Airstream. It's here. 
somebody wanted to know what does our shirt say, so they must have came in late. But it says, hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. And these are our new shirts over there on our website. Did the pond get a lot of water? Uh, yeah, the pond did. But the pond, we hadn't had rain in going on how many weeks? Eight weeks? Uh, I think it was almost, it was two it's months. It's been a minute. It's been, it's, been, it's been a while. But I will tell you what happened. Mary Carl's little boat yeah. was up on the side of the bank. Yeah. Pretty far on the side yeah, of the bank. Yeah, it was. And it was in the middle of the pond. Yeah. So, so it's, it uh, caught enough water to, I guess yeah. she's the one that got it out. Because it's is. on the bank now. It's on the bank now. So it had to be her. It had to be her. So, yeah, the um the pond, but it wasn't enough rain to fill the, the pond up for, for good. We did get, according to the National Weather Service, it was 2.9 inches of rain that day. That, I'm, I'm, yeah. I cannot believe the garden was still standing when we got home that day. I just knew yeah. we were going to see little green plants floating down County Road. Our, our old hometown, the roads were flooded over. We saw that. And then when we were coming back from Clanton, the ditches were just, uh, that's just when I said. flooding everywhere. And water was coming across the road. And it was just, just hard. It wasn't like no slow, steady rain. It was like all or nothing. And the fact that we had just planted yes. the plants made me feel like they weren't going to be there. But Yeah, I, 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 well. I felt like that the garden was going to be in uh, trouble. Well, I decided that I wasn't going to pout and raise a ruckus about it because it was not going to do me any good. It was what it was. And luckily <laughs> they were all still there. Yeah, Everything's fine. Absolutely fine. Just a couple of more. A couple of more. Let's see here. Where did we get our feed barrels? Just Craigslist. Look on Craigslist or Facebook marketplace and you'll find them. You, well, at least we did. You find them galore. Yeah I, yeah, I Googled it for a lady the other other day that lives um, over in Centerville. Uh -huh. And I told her that we found them on F Facebook Marketplace. So yeah. I looked and they were all over. However, there weren't any right near us. Yeah. Wasn't any, yeah. But food grade barrels is what you want to look for. And food then, grade barrels. And if you have a feed store close by that sells in bulk, a lot of times they may even sell them to you as well. Well, you know, Garrison's over in Thorsby yeah. sells the barrels yep. themselves. That's right. But they're not the style that we really prefer. Yeah, but they're 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 still food it's the grade same barrels. concept. Same concept. That's right. It's just a different kind of buckle on it. That's right. Can we grow satsumas? We can grow satsumas. That's about the only citrus we can grow here um, successfully. We, we can grow lemons, but there is a chance that um, the, lemon, the lemon tree won't make it. So satsumas we can grow. Update on the railing. Railing's not coming. Railing's not coming. We're going to have to regroup on the railing. Do y'all hear Zerk singing? Zerk is singing of a storm in there. It is crazy. <laughs> he kind of makes me smile like Gidget does. He you know, does. You, you can't hear him whistling and not, not smile. Yeah. That's funny. All right. Last one. Last one. What is a satsuma? It's a, it's just a citrus. It's kind, kind of, like of a small, orange. yeah. Yeah, that's what that is. Did we say last one? Where's Arlo? He's down here on the floor. He's right here. Come here, buddy. Oh. He had to get naked because he was making too much noise. So <laughs> He was jingling. And get it so this side. So <laughs> we're having a puppy party. Mm -hmm. Oh, it says he's tired. Y'all can tell he's tired. Look at him. And Dixie, I bet you, is laying outside on the cot. She is. She likes this cooler weather that we have. That's right. Can you plant figs now? Yes. Now is the time to plant any type of fruit tree. Uh, what if they're bush. in a, a cold zone, though, where uh, it's fixing the freeze? Yeah, probably not there. Uh, but in the fall is when you want to plant your fruit trees. So check your zone in your extension office. Yeah, but I don't know when your fall starts or when your cooler weather starts. But, but in Alabama. It's time for us to. We're going to be planting some fruit trees and stuff soon. Absolutely. 
Setsuma is almost like a tangerine. That is correct. All right. So yeah. when do you want to say we're going to do our next live? Because we goofed on the last one. Uh, Sundays work very well for us. Okay. Um, but I would like to do I would like to do two lives a week if we can. Well, you know what I was thinking. What? So I was sitting over by Mary Carl Swerfer. Mm -hmm. That's the type of swing that she has. Yes, yeah, that's right. And I looked down at my phone because it kind of looked like it was going to rain. It did. So I looked at my phone mm -hmm. to look at the radar, and when I did, I realized I had full internet. Did you over there? I did. So I was kind of thinking that Mary Carl and I might do a live on Mrs. Cock Hill. That would be awesome. Would Would anybody want to watch that? Mary Carl loves talking pigeons, talking birds. <laughs> she oh, does my love. gracious. She does love talking birds and pigeons. That is her passion right now. And it is today. Today was a prime example. It was an uh, eye-opener for you, wasn't it? Well, I already knew. I already knew. I mean, 100%. I already knew. But, um, yeah, I was videoing her do some things with her pigeons today for tomorrow's video and it turned into a, like a three hour synopsis of, you know, just, she just, just, she just goes on and on and on and on and on. And cause she's just so passionate about it. You can feel it. Yeah. When so I just let her go, you know, I just sit there and listen and I learn all kind of things. I can tell y'all. She, um, she's passionate about it. She she's is. knowledgeable about it and she's willing to share her knowledge. So, and not in a way that is, um, I don't know. She, she doesn't want anybody to think that she's trying to be a know-it-all. I guess yeah, is the thing. She, yeah. She doesn't want people to think that. So yeah, she would, she would like to share her interests with everybody else and she's always willing to learn too. Yep. So Everybody says yes to the year live. Okay. Yeah. Be awesome. Well, we'll make that happen. Make then. that happen. I can make that happen. <laughs> I, I can't edit a video for the life of me, but I can make a live happen. You can make the live happen. That's Sounds right. like a plan. So we'll try to do an announcement ahead of time. Okay. That we're going to do the live okay. and at what time. And that way we can kind of get people yep. prepared. That'll work. Well, guys, thank y'all so much for hanging out with us today um, or this evening. I, mean, like I, I say it all the time, but you guys could be anywhere else but here. And we just appreciate y'all so, so much. Um, y'all be good.